normal chat. Okay, so here we are on Adventure and Arb. Um, my name is Tom Robinson. I am the host of Adventure and Arb. This is our first attempt at what is essentially a podcast uh, slash YouTube clip. Yeah, so I, I think that's a fair way to put it. Yeah, so this is Wesley, Wesley Hall. Nice um, to Long time friend and peer at Myasco when we were doing a foundation degree in arboriculture and the Arb part of adventure in Arb and is now a lecturer at Myasco. Yep, lecturer at further education, teaching a range of uh, topics and courses for arboriculture. Yeah. Um, very much heavy on the theory bent though. Um, do occasionally step into doing practicals, but I'm more about trying to teach people's awareness of trees, the health, the benefits. So, so what 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 sort of uh, what sort of age range are you teaching? Everything from 16 years of age up to I think our oldest student that we've had on the course so far has been about 56 years of age. 56. There we so, go. So yeah, we've got a we've got a healthy range there. So, is it level three, isn't it? Yeah. Is that still that's still relevant? Yeah, because I, I, I actually did this course that Wesley teaches when I was what I'd been 17, 18, 19. Yeah. And that was a level three back then. Um, and that's what introduced me into arboriculture. And so for the past decade I've dipped in about both tree surgery and 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 um, and then doing the degree and went on to consultancy and now I'm doing podcasts, which is obviously the only logical. <laughs> it's, it's, it makes no sense. That's, that's what art has a tendency to do to you. It just yeah. it, it catapults you in directions you never expected your life was going to take. Well, I have to say about arboriculture that it's one of the most unusual areas. Yeah. Unusual fields. I don't think your average Joe often ends up in arboriculture. I don't think people know what it is. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. To be fair, if you're watching that's... this and you haven't yet to learn what arboriculture is. Arboriculture is Latin and it's basically the cultivation of trees. So if you imagine that the cultivation, management and, and if trees is that fair? Uh, yeah, it's a, a fair definition. If somebody who studies arboriculture or is into arboriculture or class themselves an arboriculturalist is simply somebody who is interested in the health and maintenance of trees. Yeah, precisely. It's, yeah. It's, I mean I think sometimes it's useful to people who don't know to to compare it to forestry, mm. which is its close cousin and where it was sort of born from. So forestry is, you're looking at a collection of trees as a crop. Yeah, very way. much the timber product. Yeah, very exactly. Much. So you're managing those trees in order to harvest them as a crop. Um, and it's, it, it's taken many forms in history, I suppose forestry could have been no, individual forest uh, coppice, yeah. and coppice stools and things yeah, it was like, like an advancement of woodland management. Really, yeah, was forestry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that yeah. development beyond simply having small pieces of land to having large swathes. And it's like of very a resource. Yeah, a, yeah. a commercial resource. Yeah, very much yeah. That. I think yeah. it's where the term forestry came. Can yeah. not to be confused with what a forest is. No, 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 no. which is yeah. always different. That'd be a that's an interesting topic because it's not quite a woodland either. So. We'll not go too far into the realm of uh, it's rabbit holes. That rabbit, rabbit, rabbit hole yeah. after another. But basically, arboriculture is more. You're more looking at a tree as an individual organism, um, its species, its height, its various measurements, and what it is. It, in in the same way, you would look at a, a mammal, mm. a human, as an individual, one individual and another. It's kind of how arboriculture is with trees. You get to know trees on an individual level. Yeah, I say that's fair. I'd say it is. I'd, I'd say you. you one of the key key problems you have with it, and also one of the greatest strengths of arboriculture, it's hard to pin down. It's like you can argue that if you want to get stuck into the general, just the study of the names and species and genera of plants, uh, you are very much looking at botany. Yeah. And botany is the, yeah. the key skill there. If you are looking at it from the point of view of trees, their life cycles, their dating, their morphology, their physiological traits, yeah. you're going into dendrology. Dendrology being tree slugging. Yeah, that's specific um, to that. That's an, an, an aging tree aging. Yeah, plant, yeah it is. It's like you, you have like then you have dendrochronology, which mm. is all about the historical. Are we going down into the trace? Yeah, but I think that's it's key for like audiences, anybody listening in to this, mm -hmm. to realise that if if you want to get into this subject, 
be prepared to have many, many paths open to you yeah. and to think it might change my views on what I would consider a pathway of a career in this or even just a hobby. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I like, I like, the, I like the idea of uh, obviously horticulture. Mm. Like, like, so horticulture you probably know as um, plants in general, the growth of plants in general. Mm. Uh, whereas arboriculture, I like to say, I mean, it's horrendously corny, but it's a branch of, our, of horticulture, <laughs> yeah. you know. It's actually a more specific <laughs> branch of horticulture, which again focuses on trees. And you can get it, you can go on for hours for what oh, exactly yeah. defines a tree. We can hedge our bets with it, can't we? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. We'll, we'll leave it out, we'll leave it out. <laughs> um, that's another great part of arboriculture, is we always have tree puns. Um, we're all a bit barking mad. And <laughs> Yeah, it can be a bit prickly with thorny subjects that yeah. it can be, but you know, it's. I like to think of a tree as a woody plant, and that, for me, it's always been easiest to keep it that simple. Mm. It's it, the, there are grey areas, and nothing is simple in life because as mm. soon as you start studying the natural environment, it's not simple. It opens but, your eyes, doesn't it, to what's going on around us very yeah. much all the time. It's like I, I have to say, I mean, I came to the subject completely. Fresh how, how many? How, well, how long ago now did you enter the subject? Literally four and a half years ago. It would have been. Yeah, so, four so and a half. what? What bumbling path led you? This is always what I find interesting about arboriculture and the people in it. Mm. Is that the strange bumbling paths that people end up in arboriculture? How yeah, no, ones? nobody seems to take a, a set route. Nobody goes. Well, no one when the four years old goes. I want to be yeah, arboriculture. I, I want to run a woodland. Some people think. But yeah, it's usually yeah. a, a fantasy in the same sense as I want to be an astronaut. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, I want to go on and be a fireman mum. I want you know, to live in the woods happen. in a log cabin. Yeah. That was mine when I was yeah. younger. And I think that probably helped lead me there. But I, so I didn't even know what arboriculture was until I was on the course. No, I, I did the same thing. I think the path that took me to it was a rejection, very much a, a rejection of wanting to be involved in mainstream society. It was. It's not like, don't get me wrong, I've no hermitization fantasies, I've no urge to suddenly become a, Yeah, I was going to say, that does seem to be quite common. <laughs> but I did want yeah. to get away from the idea of just being a 9 to 5 wage slave at a computer screen yeah. and spending all my days doing something I had no care for, no passion. Um, and I didn't see a future, and I just saw an endless repetition of the same day over and over, very much like Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I can, I can, I can see Phil. Phil, he's, uh, he's still always about in my mind. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty much the same story for me. Like, I mean, I was younger and yeah. I had less life experience, but I did not know what I wanted to do coming out of school. All my friends went to university. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't because I didn't. I had no faith in the path that was being sold to me personally. Yeah, you, you, you know? are sold one direction when you yeah. leave school. Yeah, yeah. It's very much a case of if you're bright academically, you're going to go do A-levels and you'll choose a university Completely. subject, a degree that will be one of probably a handful of five or six that mm -hmm. suggested. And what, what in, in, that, in that idea that's sold to you through education, mm. what is there, what is the measure of, of success in that world? You know, how would you describe the measure of success as told to us growing up? Yeah, that, I mean, I, that, that's one of the things. I, I think the measure of success is very much a wealth-based success. Yeah. It's, like, it's simply a case of you will fit one of society's pre-prescribed lots in life you if you are physical. So you, you, just, you already yeah. described it, A-levels, yeah. university. Or you'll get a vocation. And uh, you will get a vocation in usually something like manual trade. Yeah, which I think my job. I think is actually you know it was a blessing that I fell into it because mm. I think a vocation, a trade, has given me something to fall back on when I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I, I I've been in the world of arboriculture for ten years now, and yet at no point really was it the be all and end all for me? You know, it wasn't, I want nothing more than to be this, I just didn't know what to do, I ended up getting this trade, I ended up building a skill, and I've kind of come back to it, because sometimes you, well, you what? leave that world and you come back and you smell the fresh yeah. air again, and you're outside, you're with trees. Well, what was it for you, Tom, that actually pushed you into choosing arboriculture when you left from school? And you it was literally, my dad, 
I spent a full year doing nothing after I left mm. school and my dad couldn't handle it. So when the next year came up, he said, you're doing something, try Myasco, it looks a bit different. You know, he, bless him, he didn't have a clue what to do with me. We went, I went to, wanted to go and do blacksmithing, I saw people climbing trees and I thought, that's it. That sounds like the one you'll go for. Now, the, yeah, and usually that's how most people get suckered into the world of it. Where they, they, they see a tree surgeon, they will see... Nowadays it will either be they'll go on YouTube, they'll see people chop, chopping down trees, big trees in the States or in Canada, they'll see them climbing trees. Well, yeah, what were those programs? And hunting. Uh, I can't remember the names of them, but they got quite popular, weren't they? Yeah, they, they were, and they still are. I mean, you go on YouTube, it's easy enough to find them, like with adventure sports, action, yeah, camera, yeah, yeah. adverts. You know, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, I think a tree surgeon, like the watchers, if anyone is watching. <laughs> yeah, you never know, might, the, there might be somebody out there. The viewer, <laughs> yeah, if you're watching this crazy world of our culture, you most likely have heard of tree surgery more than any other term that relates to our world. Because it's like the common name um, mm. for the sort of soldier of our borough culture. Yeah, for the, for, the, for the grunt work at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah. And it shouldn't be like that because I think it's highly skilled bloody work. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it really and is. And it's dangerous and it's it's almost an art and I'd say it's one of the most underappreciated, you know, there's so many trade tradesmen around in that world. And it it's is, got a bit of a bad rap really. But it does, and that comes down to a lot of the, the misunderstanding of the profession. You, you have, you have so many people being able to say, I can go down to the local B&Q or the local home base or I suppose in, like any international viewers, it'd be uh, places like Walmart or you know Target or Best Buy, things yeah. like that, and buy a home chainsaw and even or even a slightly better industrial chainsaw. And they'll go and they'll get a set of ladders and they'll go up a tree and they'll, they'll start do, chopping they'll do, it down. They'll do what kind of logically makes yeah, sense. Yeah, what, what they think they want to see, yeah, either let's take the tree down or I don't like that branch there yeah. because that's blocking my window or it's interfering with the gutters. So they'll do the work and therein lies the crucial problem. It's not <laughs> It's not well regulated. No. Legally, you don't need a qualification in our borough. Do you still need a qualification to purchase a top-handed, a top-handled Chainsaw. It's to. no, it's a bit of a funny one that you legally you don't need the qualification. However, professionally, most suppliers will ask to see proof that you have um, yeah. a chainsaw from a rope and harness MPTC or yeah. a chainsaw with, from a rope and harness with free fall techniques to give it its full name. But that's the, mis the, that's the misconception everybody has. They think that these qualifications are a legal requirement. And no, the they are not. Yeah, selling. that's all they are. It is. It is a very. It's a. It's a strange industry, and like I say, there's lots of unique characters in it, and that's one of the reasons I really wanted to push this idea because I have met some of the most unique, craziest. And I mean, you have to be a bit crazy to get into something where the chances are at some point you're going to be in the top of a tree while the wind blows and the branches rock from side to side, and you wonder. You know, <laughs> best part of 20 meters up in the air. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, but that's it. And it's usually, like you said, it's, like it's, it's unconventional. It's building nearly. Well, it attracts people who don't like the conventional way. Yeah. It attracts people who who are afraid of the hard work, but they don't want to give up that hard work for something they don't believe in. Yeah. It just attracts people of interesting character and. People who want freedom, I think, as well. The the yeah. the job seems to doesn't matter which job role you go into, whether you're being a tree surgeon, a ground worker, um, a, an orchard manager, maybe, or even a nurseryman, or a consultant and someone who does surveys and risk reports. The job has this inherent emphasis on your choice, your time scales, your your open expanse, your your freedom. You be that either the moment you have away from everyone up in a tree. Yeah, well, that or, that that alone. I mean, it's almost quite it's quite an independent job, really. I mean, yeah, you're 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 up in the tree. If you're working up in a tree, you'll always, you should always have a second person with you, and that's yeah. called usually a groundsman or, on bigger jobs, it's a second climber. Yeah, um, and that person's job is. To, do, to, to be your eyes on the ground, I always think that's the most important thing. Most people think, oh, it's to clear away the stuff, it's to clear that. No, for me, 
it was always that when I was in the crown of a tree, if you imagine a big tall tree, and you're up there, you're looking from the inside mm -hmm. out, trying to make this, this big thing look a certain way. Yeah, and, and you, you, you can only see it from, it's like a hairdresser cutting the hair from in your scalp. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, no. it'd almost be a bit like, um, oh, just might be able to show the viewers a little bit of something. We, coincidentally enough, have a bit of a tree inside the inside the place that we're Do doing we, the filming. Uh, do we know what species this is? Well, I think I can make a good guess. Uh, Prunus, I believe. I cherry. Believe so. Yeah. So we've got a nice common cherry, you know, a typical garden tree, you might see. And the angles you guys can only see this from would give you only certain inclinations as to how you'd best deal with it. Say you need to remove a branch or to be able to obviously do pruning work. But that might be a good idea to have brought an actual specimen in for us because you can you can explain so much with a small branch. Couldn't you? Yeah, you can. And you know, the point I was going to make is it's like Thomas saying you you can't see everything from when you're up on the tree doing the work. So. That person on the ground is your second set of eyes to give you this three-dimensional space Completely. before you do any any pruning works or any surgery. And that person, um, I mean, this is, you know, having an interview with someone who lectures, especially, I think the majority were probably 17 to 21, yeah, they, you know. 16-year-olds six, to yeah. about 21 is the bulk age range that we have and, and through the doors. From that level three course, the probably the majority are going to go out and be tree surgeons. Yeah, very um, much so. Whether, whether they progress later on yeah. is, is entirely, that's a different story, but they're going to go out leaving that with a good basic knowledge on the ideal, the ideal person leaving can handle themselves in a tree. Mm. They can cut and they can process trees from mm. taking it off the crown yeah. to the ground to away and they can describe what the tree is, they know the basic knowledge of these trees and what they're basically set up to do, in my opinion of how it, it probably should work, is they're set up to join a tree team. And they're set up to join a tree team, in my in my opinion, as the groundsman, as the person, as the eyes on the floor. And yeah. gradually learn the craft learn, learn the experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit like a modern apprenticeship really, but with a bit of a head start rather yeah, than it's, ten years. It doesn't that, mean that people don't still do apprenticeships. Some people don't Yeah, the apprenticeship don't side of it is still very popular yeah. with uh, with people who otherwise the academic route, the traditional academic route, the exams I, or some of the, the in fact, assessment work. In Australia I've still I mean if I it could possibly watch this, I have got it on Facebook. A shout out to a guy called Michael Porson. Um he was from the UK and he'd never done any of the courses, mm. but he was probably the best tree surgeon I've ever worked with. Yeah. But he was a young lad, he went out with his dad, I think it was probably like his dad's mate. Yeah, so yeah, he, so he's, he's done it from young he's lad, done it from young lad, lad yeah, yeah. exposed but to the culture. I would say he's had a longer, he's had, he's had to work longer and harder to earn his rightful position. I think he's a supervisor now. Mm. Whereas he could have probably been the supervisor well before I met him, you know. But I think maybe not having the qualification held him back. That yeah, I, w I wonder about that because, I mean, this is the thing, right? The, the route through education, if any of you out there are thinking of taking up arboriculture as a trade, a craft, or just out of curiosity to learn. So you start out normally for someone with no background knowledge in it, they maybe just done a quick Google search and found out what being an arborist or a tree surgeon involves. You normally start out with a level two qualification formally, and that will give you your basic tickets for how to use wood chipper um, tickets. Just to clarify, they are a practical competency certificate yeah. that you get given to say that yeah, you've been trained on how to use a piece of machinery, and you're not going to kill yourself with it you, or break the machine quickly. You should be able to know how to deal with it. I think competence. Um, is, yeah, is competence a is a key word, word yeah. isn't it? It's not. You're not an expert, but you are competent. Yeah, and. You get that, you get your chainsaw cross cutting and maintenance, and you're also getting used to stone ground around climbing an aerial rescue, how to access a tree from a rope and harness, but also how to perform a safe rescue on someone if they get into a difficulty. That's well, really important. Though, oh, it's huge, you know, because at the end of the day, it's like Tom was saying before, the, the, the industry is, I think, consistently ranked in the top 10 most dangerous jobs in the whole world. Yeah, you can imagine. And I think it regularly hits the top five because 
normally if something goes wrong for us when we're up in the tree, it goes it. wrong badly. Yeah, it's a severe problem. It's just you do the maths, you know, height. Yeah, height times chain, to get down. Like deadly machine, yeah. chainsaw, and you know, unpredictable organism. Yeah, you, you're dealing with a living weather. organism. You don't yeah, know, know what it's going to do, no matter how well you're And, you and are. this is, you know, you mentioned before how most people at home, like if you're watching this and, and you maybe you've got a chainsaw of your own, or maybe you've done a bit yourself. And we said it's the logical conclusion, I think, sometimes is to go, well, I need that tree cutting. I'm going to grab my. B and Q saw, and yeah. I'm going to go out and <laughs> yeah. do what I've seen on Fugs Bunny. Yeah, and things you know. I'm going to do the chop, and then see what happens. Yeah, or and get my axe out even worse and start hacking away. At the back and then it. you get the YouTube videos where the trees go through the house yeah. and things. Now, sometimes they go right, and then probably the majority of the time there's no problem just because of luck and because of common sense. But the difference is, is when it becomes a career, you're doing this every single day. Mm. And luck only holds for so long. Yeah, really does. And, and if you're not skilled and you're not doing it properly, you're not doing it safely, it's not going to hold for no. that. It's the same with actually doing reduction work or any kind of clearance work on a tree's canopy or crown with the intention of actually seeing the, the, the organism carry on living. Yeah. It's, it's very easy to go up there, take off too much of a tree, reduce it heavily, and find that you've you've taken most of its living tissue away, you've taken most of what it uses for life. And all it takes then is a change in the climate, a particular pathogen, something like an insect or even a, a mammalian or vertebrate sort of pests, yeah. such as squirrels. Um, they're not all fluffy, don't love all the squirrels they have. They cause a lot of damage yeah. to trees when they're, when they're adolescent, when grey squirrels particularly, in the UK, let, uh, yeah. let's not go too far down here, <laughs> you know, everyone loves red squirrels in the UK because they're very rare, but they're a pest in Europe, but grey squirrels in the UK, when adolescent and male, for some reason just hate trees. Yeah, they, they are always stripping I, the bark. The damage they cause, like, I will try if I can learn how to edit well enough to insert a picture at this point that shows a squirrel damaged <laughs> yeah. tree. It, you would not believe that what they can do. And it's absolutely everywhere. You just give me a brilliant idea for something that needs to be done. Oh, go on. Time lapse on a grey squirrel section of uh, woodland or forest. Something woodland. where we know. You'd have to... So you could see on various, have various trees mm -hmm. monitored. You could probably Set a 24 do it in hour the, time what was it, crow, was it crow wood? Where yeah, crow wood. If you've got any trees left, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that <laughs> are squirrel damage. <laughs> There's a fair few, but they have got bad squirrel damage already existing on. But yeah, no, you, you know, it'd be fascinating to actually do it. Just to it would be, be fascinating to, to see the up. actual damage yeah. being done. Because I've never seen it being done. I've only ever seen the, after the evidence of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah because it, that, well, that's the thing with trees. And you said before, you know, you were talking about if you go overboard, even if you don't go too overboard with cutting a tree and you don't realise it's living organism element, mm. uh, the chances are, and this is why skilled and well-educated, I yeah, think our definitely. horticulture is essential. Well-educated is essential because you'll understand how trees don't always like too much taken off of the yeah. tree. If it goes yeah. wrong, just like, right, use a human for instance, you chop, if it, you're, you're out doing a Bear grills adventure, you're out in the wild, and oh, going. Mm -hmm. you, you, you slip and you perhaps do some great yeah. injury, you know, and, and the biggest threat, providing you survive that injury, the biggest threat is, is not the pain, it's, it's the infection. It's, yeah, it's, it's the, the life, the long term after effects, it's, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's the potential of sepsis, yeah. you know, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, it, once you've been damaged, you're very vulnerable. You know, and that's yeah. the same with trees. As soon as they're damaged, they're very vulnerable. Now, with trees, unlike humans, it doesn't happen overnight. No, it can no. take five to ten years. That, that, that's the thing. <laughs> you, you, you play in the waiting game with trees to find out whether something's going to affect them after you've done it. It's, you're not going to necessarily see it over the course of twelve months or even no. a couple of years, twenty-four months. You are you are looking to see what's happening in the five or ten-year period. And you know, going back to it, 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 I think that's one of the things people don't appreciate is that. Arboriculture as an industry is very young. It is you know, as, as it an is. actual recognised industry. It it's is, about right. fifty to sixty years old. Well, we said before. Or young. Really. We talked before about how it was born from forestry. Yeah. 
and which is an old discipline. No, forest, yeah, yeah, forest is a very yeah. old discipline, and you can you can be a chartered forester. That's quite a well respected and quite old yeah. discipline. But chartered forestry has now given birth to chartered arboriculture within it. Yeah, you very know, it's so. in the same way the industry yeah. was kind of born. You know, there was there was just a there's a separation came too far where it could remain the same thing. Someone managing a plot of land to grow trees and harvest them and process mm. them was so far removed from someone who was looking at an individual tree, its unique position in the like urban environment primarily around trees and humans and people. Yeah, very much so. It, that is so removed that it couldn't remain the same. You know? No, and that's the thing, they, they, they didn't. If you trace back historically, people like Capability Brown when he was doing his landscaping, mm. you know, he, he was selecting specimen trees. He was selecting from a, a botanical, from a horticulturalist, but also from a landscape designer's point of view, an architectural point of view. He was selecting trees for his designs that were unique, that had strong aesthetic visual qualities to them, that it could have even been... How long? When was, it? What, what, when was he doing this, though? He was doing this around the... 18th century, I believe it was, if I'm correctly, and I might double check the dates on this. This bit could be edited. It would be interesting. But yeah, it was. It was definitely Victorian times. Well, I, 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 I believe that because I remember watching. I don't remember what film, what film this is now. This could be edited as well. So find, <laughs> find out which film it is. Facts checking. Definitely something you should be doing before doing live recording. On the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that gives me a bit of space to find it there. <laughs> On this film, it was black and white and it was a manor house. It's quite a famous film. It might be like Gone with the Wind or something like that. And I've seen yeah. the film, it's probably not. It's, it, as it's doing its introduction, it's in a grand old like manor house. And the, 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 the voiceover is talking about, and Lord Wensdale, and, and then goes through all the staff. Yeah. The, 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 and then he actually says, the arboriculturalist. I remember being really shocked by that because I was like, oh, well, that's got to be an old film, that's got to be 80 years old now. And to you think know. they were talking and using that turn of phrase and back that, then. But I suppose, are we, are we touching on where arboriculture was born? Because yeah, you see, that's the problem. That's what they're doing. They've been going for a long they time. They have. Yeah, it was so fashionable. Are ancient. During, during the British Empire and its adventurous days, if you had money and you're an aristocrat and you had land, there was nothing for you to do. It was, there was nothing, yeah, not it, really, unless you unless you found a purpose. So you'd go and be an adventurer. Or exactly, yeah. Or so if you could go and find a tree that grew yeah. in, what's well, simple, fine. absolute, yeah, in, in <laughs> a place no one else goes to, and bring it back and cultivate it and grow it in yeah. your lovely land. People will never have seen that. What you know, what a yeah. show of, and, and obviously showing of wealth was a huge part of it. That's probably a big part of the origin of our boriculture because we're maybe neglecting. Yeah. That side, because we've talked a lot about tree surgery, the cutting and management of trees, but yeah, the, but not the, the historical grow. relevance. Yeah, well, you you mentioned it the, with capability brown. Yeah, the yeah. The, the choice in the landscape. It's yeah. a huge, huge part of it. And that's, I think that's where again we we made some sort of earlier uh, definitions of what being an arboriculturalist is or what arboriculture means. Actually, uh, you could uh, split those up. Yeah, you, you could say that arboriculture is a wider study. I'll give us a refill, and you can explain. <laughs> yeah, leave, leave what is it? Arboriculture, arborist, and arboriculture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So all those terms, they could be interchanged. They could be grouped together. But I would personally describe myself as an arboriculturalist. I'm somebody who is passionate about the health of trees. That is interested in making sure the correct trees are imparted into the right parts of the landscape. An arborist is a more accurate term for somebody who might be classed as a tree surgeon. But an arborist is somebody who maintains and manages the health of trees. And arboriculture itself being the study of trees, but the clear distinction we try to make a lot of the time is it's very much about the urban landscape. And the urban landscape is vast. It's not just the city, it's not just the parklands that we see in the city. It can be your garden. A nice space at the back where you've taken the time to set up your deck in, maybe plant a few species of trees. You know, it should be a little slice of heaven. But yeah, the, there is that variation and difference to be made, that distinction. And I think that's, this is key to what we, you know, at least that's certainly what I keep trying to soldier forward with, with teaching the students, mm -hmm. is that they should aspire to view themselves as being more than simply a tree surgeon. 
which unfortunately is the mindset most will come into the industry 